Hey, Denise Fyodorov here. In this video, I'll tell you about two crucial pronunciation differences between Russian and English, which deeply affect pronunciation and of which you should definitely be aware about. Let's start. The first crucial difference is more related to the English language than Russian, and it is going to be my input as of a Russian native speaker who studies English, and that would be English vowel sounds richness. The thing is that in the English language there are much more vowel sounds than in Russian, from the first look 20 in English versus only 6 in Russian, which makes English a pretty vowelish language, as you might guess. However, to avoid confusion, I must say that in Russian and English we have slightly different approach to what we really call a sound. That's why, despite that officially in Russian we have six vowel sounds, from the English language perspective I would say that Russian has ten vowel sounds. However, still, 10 is much less than 20, so English is still a pretty vowelish language. Plus, to finish us English learners in terms of pronunciation, the same English vowel letter can represent several vowel sounds, like the letter A represents five sounds, which means that if you meet a new word in a text, you're often going to be unsure how to pronounce it properly. So. English vowels, in terms of pronunciation, can be called difficult, as you might guess. What it all means in practice is that the Russian vowel system is simpler and, as you might guess, in, it is impossible to produce English vowel sounds variety with Russian sounds. The Russian pronunciation is simpler in vowels and you must understand that clearly. So, if you listen to a Russian native speaker speaking English and if one did not study the English pronunciation, at least on a mid-level, I'll tell you a small secret, that's almost everyone, one's accent will be hugely based on improper or simplified Russian-style pronunciation of English vowels, because we do not have that variety of vowel sounds in Russian. So, for example, from Russian perspective, A in card and U in cut would be exactly the same sound A. Ah. But of course, uh, the trickiest thing would be uh, to reproduce the difference between the following words you see on the screen. I will not be pronouncing them in this context, uh, better safe than sorry, but you can see them on the screen. So, from the one hand, this vowel disproportion uh, makes it difficult for a Russian tongue and mind to produce sounds that do not exist in Russian. That's why vowels are a, signif a significant part of a Russian accent in English. However, some of what I've just told you works the opposite way too, because in Russian we have one new vowel sound for English speakers, which is U which is not present in English in any form, which you'll have to learn to pronounce from scratch if you study Russian. This sound is very important in Russian and very audible too, so inability to pronounce U influences accent very much, that's why you better learn it. And by the way, this video comes with the special handout, a PDF. The link to it is in the description, so if you want to learn to pronounce Russian U, among other things, there will be a special page devoted to it. You can download it below. Ok, now the second difference. Uh, the second difference will be quite opposite to the first, and that will be Russian consonant richness. You see that irony before it was an English vowel richness, which makes it hard for us Russian speakers to pronounce things properly in English, and now it is this Russian consonant richness, which makes it hard for English speakers uh, to pronounce things in Russian in a near native speaker manner. Here is the deal. In Russian there are 42 sounds and 33 letters. In English, there are 44 sounds and 26 letters. Uh, 
The main reason why sounds and letters do not coincide in number is because often a letter can represent several sounds. I mean that the same letter can sound quite differently or a bit differently depending on the context. In English, a letter can represent different sounds like the letter U can sound as U in university and U in umbrella. Here, one letter represents two very different sounds, as you see. And nothing like this is happening in Russian, thanks God. However, in Russian, most consonant letters represent two consonant sounds, like the default alphabet sound itself and its altered soft variant, which is a little bit different. So, the main uh, thing uh, why in Russian there are more sounds than letters is about the fact that uh, in Russian most of our consonants uh, can be hard and soft. To learn to pronounce Russian soft consonants is usually a huge problem for foreigners. Of course, very often it is not a problem at all, because if one is blissfully unaware of the existence of these soft consonants, then there is no problem at all. And after all, speaker's pronunciation is a problem not of a speaker, but of a listener. But of course, if you want to sound correctly, so for others it would be pleasant to speak with you, or you are working on an accent reduction, of course you must learn to pronounce Russian soft consonants. Let me explain what they basically mean. In English, this softening like in Russian is not very common, but it kind of happens there too, but in a less pronounced form. A an example from English boy, b. If we look closely at b in boy, uh, it is pronounced in a harder way, and b, b in b is pronounced softer because e is a purely um, softening vowel sound and it influences the letter b even in English. Why did this happen? It is called confluence, uh, which basically means that a subsequent vowel influences the preceding consonant. I mean that in Russian we naturally and without question uh, allow our consonants to be soft and hard, because we love confluence, uh, while English tends to avoid this. For example, if we take the word new and two versions of its pronunciation, new and new, the first one would be when we allow confluence, new, and the second uh, one when we insert a separator, new. Well, in Russian there are hard and soft signs which play this role of a separator, so if there is no such a sign after a consonant, it means that it is pronounced with a confluence, so it will be like new and not new. So, confluence means that the word few will be pronounced as few unless you put here a soft or a hard sign. If you put a hard sign, F will be pronounced in a hard default alphabet way and it will be pronounced as few, few. And if we put a soft sign, F will become a soft consonant and will be pronounced as few, few. However, F is not the best letter in the world to explain this, so let's change few on du, D will be better. So, hard, soft, of course, with the Russian accent. Dyu, 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 dyu. Again, dyu, 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 dyu. On the image, you can see what was happening with my articulators when I was pronouncing D or D in a hard and a soft way. As you see, my tongue was placed quite differently. For the hard D, the tip of the tongue was pressed against the upper incisors. And actually, you should pay attention to this because 
English D is pronounced with the tip of the tongue, hitting the alveolar ridge that is a bit behind. So in Russian, our tongue is in a more forward position. And for the soft D, the tip of the tongue was put down to the lower incisors and body of the tongue was pressed against the alveolar ridge. That actually is the general instruction for the soft consonants pronunciation, which is about getting your tip of the tongue to the lower teeth and using the body of the tongue instead to squeeze the sound out. Okay, the summary to this consonants issue. The thing is that Russian sounds basically are sounds that you meet in the alphabet. There are no any other hidden sounds, all of them are in the alphabet. In English, it is not so. However, most Russian consonants can have their own altered uh, soft version because uh, the Russian language is a language of confluence. And if these letters that you see on the screen right now are located after consonants, they soften them because these vowels have a soft nature. And that's why via confluence, uh, they make the preceding consonants soft. Okay, that's it for the video. And don't forget that I have prepared a handout for you that covers the stuff we've discussed in this video. The download link is in the description. So see you!